Good morning. Um, excuse that I'm, let's not say perspiring, let's just say glowing. Excuse the glow. Uh, it's early morning, but Australia in some areas has pretty much 100% humidity. It can make the temperature 10, 12 degrees. It can make it feel 10 or 12 degrees more than it really is. Uh, it's just like wading through water um, just to move around. So it's very hot and humid. I might repeat some things here. I'm sorry if I do. Sometimes I forget what videos I've made these days. Um, I did just want to talk about Suzanne Morphew's case. I kind of prefer to think of it like that. I don't like to think, you know, Barry Morphew's case because I think naturally we do speak that way when it comes to murder cases. For example, um, the woman that I've spoken about here before because I wanted to um, juxtapose Suzanne and Barry Morphew's situation against theirs, and that was Corinne Rainey. Um, and so often, you know, in Australia, you see it's written about, you know, so Lloyd, you know, Lloyd Rainey, um, when it was Corinne that lost her life, the difference being that Corinne's body was found, she was found buried in a city park in Perth, Western Australia. She never would have been found, right? She would not have been found and she was 50 metres off a really major track in a major city park. She would never have been found if the murderer, who has never been brought to justice, if they had not bowled a bollard over, so you know the posts that are stuck into the ground, sometimes the metal and they're on a street to stop people being able to ram into glass buildings. Um, sometimes they're just placed, so, you know, alongside a park. Generally, they are a barrier without creating a fence, so a bollard. Um, the perpetrator or perpetrators had, and I think there may have been two people, had driven through two bollards, but when they've left, they've backed over one, and it was, um, that was part, well, that was the reason why they were caught. Not that someone noticed the bollard, although I think that might have actually led to finding Corinne. Oh, there's a bollard bowled over. Who was driving through here? Walk 50 metres up off the main track down another trail um, and there's tire marks, drag marks. They wouldn't have been noticed without the bollard, but I mean the bollard damaged the vehicle. It was Corinne's own vehicle and um, I think the gearbox was damaged um, as the car drove over it, reversing in haste and uh, there was an oil leak. And it was traced for just a few kilometres to where the car was abandoned because the car stopped working. But, you know, often it's, you know, Lloyd Rainey is um, spoken about. His name is in the headline, etc., etc., and not Corinne Rainey. Anyway, that well, that was a long waffle, wasn't it? Um, but anywho, I always think of it as, um, I know it's terrible to use a hashtag, but it's always on my mind, hashtag find Suzanne. And that's really, that's at the heart of her justice, isn't it? I think everybody agrees on that. You might disagree about other things, but no one will disagree about that. And we all know that DA Linda Stanley, da da da, is not looking for Suzanne Morphew, right? She just hasn't been, they're not. The investigation has never been about finding Suzanne, not in official channels. Um, 
seems to be everyone else. I don't even know what the Mormons are fucking doing to find Suzanne, right? The not in court. I've said this from the start. Where are they? They have not been at any hearing, at any court date. And they hadn't been to visit Suzanne in life in Colorado. And they haven't physically been there to send a message after her death other than Andy Mormon, who, you know, was the Muppet of Chris McDonough, wasn't he? So today I just wanted to have a little chat. Um, people that do watch Humanimal Channel probably... Um, all know about Suzanne Morphew's case and possibly have seen all the footage uploaded by AK Rocks. So A-K-R-O-X or one word if you haven't. And okay. <laughs> this is where I'm always getting in trouble, right? Because how I see things, how I see things is you should not want to spend time and energy laboring about things that in the end are unhelpful, that are untrue, that waste energy, that waste your mental resources, that just feed an animal that should just be left in the wild, you know, peanuts, zoo, well, don't treat this like the zoo. And don't throw peanuts at the peanut gallery. This is what happens, though. We've still got people to this day, and I'm talking some what would be considered large YouTubers because there's every size channel um, invested in Suzanne Morphew from 50 people that I watch to 100 to 3,000 to 10,000, 15, 100,000 and more. And some of those larger channels and their sycophant followers uh, seem to get some sort of kick. It's like their tummies get all squishy and tingly um, to talk about Barry Morphew chasing Suzanne around the house, running through walls and going at 100 mile an hour. They still talk about it. They still bring it up, sometimes in a school mum way. Just my opinion, you know. Um, <laughs> sorry, but that's puke. Um, it doesn't serve anybody. Do you see it's not ser serving Suzanne? Because what you want is the truth, don't you? How do you want anything else it's like I, I i i just don't get that and i never have and that's why i talk about it because i don't think it's valuable to do things like that it doesn't help your cause it just undermines everything else that you might think believe say and it gets you nowhere. And it gets you nowhere. Um, so AK Rocks. So he's playing some of the videos. I only use my phone at the moment. I haven't had the opportunity to put something even on a big VDU. And, um, and to use software to change contrast and things like that. I think it will be very interesting to examine footage. Um, playing with light and contrast just to see things a little more clearly maybe. But what I did do is I took a lot of screenshots of both of Morphew's hands, okay? Now, oh, he's hiding something. He's got his hands in his pockets all the time. Everything we've seen tells us if you are just being irrational-minded, 
person who doesn't just like to get a thrill saying things like, he's hiding his hands. It's as if you get a sexual charge out of it. You've got to stop. Um, it's clearly a baseline. That's just my perspective. Sure, I could be wrong, but to me, that looks like what experts talk about as a baseline. A hand in the pocket, two hands in the pocket. He's clearly in many photographs over decades in that very pose. Sometimes even with his hands in his pockets while his wife Suzanne is holding on to him, you know. Uh, it's a baseline. It is, I mean, deviating from that would be interesting. Suddenly, uh, he's doing this all the time, right? He's not. It, it, take it off the table. This isn't to say that having a hand in the pocket can't be part of sleight of hand, okay? So just arguing things like that is just so moot, Okay, I took many, many screenshots, too many. Um, when bright torchlight is on Morpheus' hands, I couldn't see these marks, these marks that were supposed to happen during the disappearance of Suzanne Morphew, right? And I kind of have always thought that... Morphew was looking for something and he's down in the creek and he's moving rocks. And that's what I thought he got his hands marked and bruised from, right? After the fact. Not allowed to say this. No, clearly he got them beating her up or doing something to her that very day and night. Um, I don't believe so. I am happy for others with better equipment to show me the photos where he's got the marks, even a slight bruising, even the beginnings of something. I, I can't see it, not beyond what might be there naturally for someone that does landscaping, although we know he's probably had a nice soak in a bathtub. His hands are probably quite clean uh, upon the arrival on the scene on Highway 50. Sadly, we don't get to see... Um, the arm, uh, there's long-sleeved clothing on, isn't there? Even though he's walking around, though, in black T-shirts and a blue T-shirt, possibly. Is it a baby blue T-shirt in Broomfield? So you would be able to see the marks on the arms in security footage. Someone, again, with good equipment, please look at that. I haven't been able to see clearly, obviously, um, to say whether I believe or not the marks are there or not. I couldn't notice anything, but those images are very difficult to look at. But again, I, I personally couldn't see the marks that were supposed to be there that occurred in an event of disappearing his wife, right? Um to acknowledge things like this, just say that that is all tr correct. To acknowledge these things. I, I don't understand why this means that someone is saying someone is not guilty or it wasn't possible that they are involved in the disappearance of Suzanne Morphew, right? I don't understand that... That could be called reasoning. It's so frustrating. But I don't see those marks there. So it just means that something else happened. It doesn't mean Morphe wasn't aware uh, or didn't arrange something or became aware after the fact and knows exactly what happened and why and maybe it's because of him. I mean, I've often wondered and I've said it here over, well over a year ago, uh, did Suzanne not like the way Barry did biz? And did she learn something about what he was involved in? And did they know? I, I don't know. There's the 
something sort of a little incongruent with that, or I don't know if it's incongruent or not, actually, where she has expressed to him, don't worry, I'll still do your books. I, I, I can't quite work out how that would fit in. Um, then I wanted to talk about three other things, or four maybe, which is the cop with the tats and the uh, handsy hands, uh, Jeff Repuckett, Morgan Gentile, and um, Fesis Dam. So, what time have I got? Okay, sorry. I've got to go to work soon. Um, with regards to the law enforcement officer who handsies, handles the bike, so no gloves, picking up the bike, kind of seems aware that, oh, trying not to touch it, but he's, he's clearly gripping it. There's, there's seats being touched. There's all sorts of things going on, right? Let's just, now, I kind of say, oh, it could be the cop's DNA and he could have a relative that is an abductor and rapist. Um, I'm being a little facetious because I do realise that cops, when they join the force, they have their fingerprints and probably DNA these days taken, right? Or is it just fingerprints? Um, but, you know, maybe it's his DNA. Did he look? We need to know. Did the same cop look in Suzanne's car? Did he touch a stair in the house? Did he touch things in the bedroom? The same tattooed officer. Um, maybe not. Uh, with the same DNA from the garage floor if indeed that is the bike flipped over would that be inside Suzanne's car though right if it's just from previous people um if it came from the bicycle shop would it be inside Suzanne's car is that possible you know all these things need to be linked there was apparently new DNA new um, information about DNA on a stairway and in the bedroom in the bedroom where a bullet was found I wonder a nine mil. You know, these things have to be linked together and to create sensation about one thing but labouring under miscomprehensions or whatever, I, I don't think it's useful. But this is, D.A. Linda Stanley, this is your job to ensure now that this all gets taken care of, explained. Um... They need to know, but they need to be able to absolutely rule everything out, else out other than Morphew, right? And they're not doing this. <sighs> because a good case could be made that Suzanne maybe came off her bike up at the hill. Maybe she was coming back and trying to cross the um, highway. She could have been abducted right off the highway and taken west, right? Or into Salida. This is just a possibility. Um, helmet being that way, um, which did she lose first? Which was tossed first by a passenger when out the passenger window, across one lane and down onto the Fooster's Dam side, or coming back out a driver's window onto the Fooster's damn side I mean out of the um like how how coming down that way if you're driving on the, the the left it's a bit harder isn't it it's easier even if you're on the second lane over right lane going west to throw out a driver's window isn't it so what are we talking here two people what I don't know the mystery of the helmet needs to be solved um just like the mystery of the DNA, right? Um, because hands aren't evidence at this stage because they were pearly, they were going like, they, they were, looked as clear as this, just from what I could see. Um, so it, it looks like damage done afterwards, right?
testimonies. Now, I'm sorry, but I think it's so hypocritical. I'm, I'm so sorry to, to lord someone like Jeffrey Puckett. You've got people enjoying his humour. Sure, he can crack off a one-liner. I don't give a shit. The guy is a domestic violence perpetrator. He's a domestic abuser. How hypocritical of people when you are so incensed by what you think Suzanne Morphew lived with, but because it serves you, you will believe a motherfucker like Jeffrey Puckett? In my opinion, that is what he is. It is true. He has done time for not only using methamphetamine, but manufacturing it. Not only using and manufacturing it, exposing his child to that. He's done prison time for that. And he's got domestic abuse charges. He's got domestic violence charges. He is a shitbag, in my opinion. So... He's probably going to do more time for that as well. And yet, well, because it serves something, he, it serves nothing. He is he is nothing to me in terms of uh, bringing whomever disappeared Suzanne to justice. He's got nothing of value. He was there in Broomfield. He was driving through Colorado Springs with Morgan Gentile, Liar extraordinaire, another one who, when it serves your purpose, she's either uh, the mistress or, wow, she's um, a great witness. To me, again, I, you know, the prosecution and the defense can get their uses out of both of them, but they are nothing to me. Uh, Morgan Gentile. I said it over and over again. People are maybe just realizing this. Uh, she's not to be trusted. She did get paid. I wonder if she asked for a severance package and then she was told by people on behalf of Morphew, uh, well, that's going to look like, um, well, well we, we just aren't giving you a severance packet. You... Legally, we don't have to give you one, maybe. And she is saying, oh, because this would look like hush money, right? Because she's bitter. She got dumped. She didn't have any more job work, okay? But, you know, let's not forget that Morgan Gentile, oh, apparently she's the baby mama. Her two boys will grow up seeing everywhere that she was accused of having Barry Morphew's children boys right and that she's this that and the other making fun of some resume on LinkedIn that's made to sound really lascivious about the work she's doing do you believe she wrote that she probably didn't um speaking of LinkedIn yeah very early on I wish I had contacted Chafee County Sheriff's Office, although in hindsight it wouldn't have done anything, to say that, did you realise Suzanne is on LinkedIn? Anyway, because I, I saw her there. I looked. Many people probably did. We just probably didn't think anything of it. It was very weird. And the one connection, right? Um, so, you know, Morgan, oh, uh, he was idling outside my house. It's like, okay, did you look outside the window? No. She lived on a busy road outside, like a truck stop, this big car park where trucks are doing, sorry, it's so hot. Trucks, nice. Trucks are doing nothing but coming and going, right? And idling and, and that sort of thing. Um, she changed the times. It was obviously just useless as a um, witness statement, right? And she's been found to be a big liar. No surprises. I feel, I mean, I'm sorry, this just sounds so like, you know, my way or the highway. But I, I truly believe it doesn't serve justice. It's not honouring Suzanne 
to make a circus out of things, right? And to not be objective and to not examine everything, you know, give it due consideration and discard it if it's ludicrous. It's, it's not, you make entertainment, okay? And okay, maybe it's great to be able to bring lightheartedness to such serious things. I personally I feel like it doesn't have a place. I just can't do it. I think people probably think I have zero sense of humor and that I'm a very heavy person. In fact, I am a total dick. <laughs> um, I like to lighten heavy situations, defuse situations. I like to be funny, to be whip smart with witticisms and, you know, quick lines or just 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 silly. I like to lighten the mood because life is heavy. Um, but that's just me. Okay, so there was one other thing, and it is really, you know, um, Foose's Dam, isn't it? It's just Foose's Dam. They went for a walk there. Can I say about the camelback? I'm not quite sure how I'm going to word what I, I'm feeling about Foose's Dam and, and what, but the camelback, much is made of not wearing that. It, it was not warm. It wasn't warm. I feel like if you're just going for 40 minutes an hour, you're not putting a kilo, two, three onto your back. One liter is a kilogram. You probably know that. Sorry for treating you like an idiot. Um, and you don't need it. You can hydrate before and after. And I certainly, I wouldn't bother for such a short journey. If I'm going out all day on a bicycle or whatever, sure. Uh, I just wouldn't bother with the camelback for those rides. I don't know why Suzanne would have been all the time. Um, it's a, yeah, it's a weird one, isn't it? With the car. Was her purse just always in there? Was it loaded up because she was going? Or did she always just intend just to walk up to the end of Puma Path, cross the highway, do a trail there? Would that have been something more common to do let me tell you this too someone that's been cycling one month is not intermediate they are beginner they might be ballsy uh, i mean going downhill on a bike i no i i couldn't i couldn't trail ride i don't think on a bike um it's slippery it's terrifying uh and you're not in kevlar and leather like you are on a motorcycle and no one wants lacerations in their skin. No one wants that scar tissue. No one wants to be pulling stone out of your flesh. Right? <laughs> yeah, give me motorcycling any day. Um, but it wasn't, it wasn't hot. You can see how young Miles is dressed. At the time, he was just a young man. Macy's apparently ex-boyfriend um, and he's jacketed up it's the long pants everyone looks like that they're wrapped for the weather you know um, I don't believe she would have felt she needed a camelback of water couldn't last until she gets home if she did go for a ride of course I'm not saying I think she did or anything like that um possibly was her intention she was possibly in bicycle gear just because she often went between four and five in the afternoon doesn't mean you wouldn't go for a morning ride either okay just it's i don't think that's an arguable point either you know what happened i've often felt like someone may be surprised her in the garage Yes, could have been her husband. Um, but let's just say on the Sunday morning that someone even did surprise her in the home, pushed through. 
she ran she didn't get far when you come in you just go straight around straight around to the bedroom she might have been trying to get in there and lock herself in somewhere she might have been trying to get to a gun i don't know but then you know of jules another day in the car whom is just such a, a you know marvelous person to watch because she's so clear and concise she doesn't ramble like me um she does talk about the timing the afternoon before and you know it seems to have been a pattern that when Suzanne was alone as soon as Barry would leave the home she's on the phone to her lover and that there wasn't that activity seemingly when Barry left to go uh, take his bobcat away somewhere <sighs> hmm You know, and that's the, I, I find it, I don't want to keep saying hypocritical, I'm not down on Suzanne about it, but people need to realise, you know, memoirs or when you're talking about your own life and even to very close friends, you are editing all the time. It's just human nature. And Suzanne was in the throes of lies all the time. She was telling lies to people because she's, she's saying, Barry is trying to, you know, he's always accusing me of an affair. He's accusing you of an affair because you're having one and you're always on your phone doing secret women's business and maybe he knows and you're going off on trips and, you know, you're not where you say you are and all of this stuff, right? It's so hypocritical of her. She was having the affair, okay? And she's trying to catch Barry probably for the sake of divorce rather than it be her that was having the affair that would come out in divorce proceedings, right? And she chose a pathetic man. I don't care that he made really, you know, what actually um, is quite disturbing, disrespectful, pathetic jokes about, well, I just go to uh, confession, you know, Catholics just go to confession and then it's all right again. Uh, it's so immoral. And even as a joke, you know, it's show, you don't have true faith, right? And, you know, Tiffany Marie has said that, you know, this drama queen on, on YouTube. That's what she says. Well, I'm all right with God because I can just go anytime I want and confess and then everything's all right. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't understand those attitudes. You have to be <laughs> truly wanting to um, repent, right? And make an effort not to be a reoffender. It's not, it's just, ugh, he's so cringe. He, how could the investigation have been saved if he had come immediately forward? So much.